Or tell me what you do not like about your job. Hmm. Uh, that's interesting. So I uh, do not like. That's a tricky question. <laughs> yeah, well. Hello, everyone. We are going to be starting a live interview in Aisha Tech. I know it's the new year. You all have been asking for a lot of live interview videos and also more interview videos. So we're going to be having like up to 10 videos on this series. So you're going to be having a real life interview. Share it with your friends, like and subscribe to this channel so that you will not miss any real life interview. Thank you all for watching Aisha Tech and let's get started with the interview. All right, so Samuel, I have your resume here with me uh, and I'm, I we're looking for a Scrum Master slash Project Manager for this kind of position. And I come across your resume and I felt like you're gonna be a very good fit for this position. So that's why you are selected and shortlisted for this position. So before we get started, uh, Samuel, tell me a little bit about yourself. So. Uh, good afternoon, Aisha, and thank you so much for, you know, inviting me for this interview. I'm really pressured. Uh, okay, so I have over five years experience as a Scrum Master and Project Manager, and um, over these years, I've helped, you know, manage Scrum teams from, you know, early stage to, you know, maturity, and I've uh, worked with, you know, different uh, managers uh, different industry ranging from IT to engineering and finance and also over these years I've used you know some industry tools like you know Jira and Confluence and a few other you know tools just to ensure that you know the teams are very productive and also able to get desired results on the project goal and um, uh, I have my first experience started from uh, about you know six years ago uh, uh, introduction to you know uh, project management and i was able to support the team uh, from day to day like you know the daily scrum uh also like the retrospective for sure uh this uh, scrum review a uh, sprint review sorry yeah so uh, those are like my you know day-to-day -day, uh, experience all right samuel thank you for that brief introduction so tell me about uh, a specific project you've been part of and how did you help support that project to a successful delivery? All right, uh, that's a good question. Um, actually, I was waiting for you to ask a few questions so that I can you know, deliberate on my experience. Uh, uh, some of my most recent uh, experience have been in um, some IT projects, uh, such as data migration. Uh, so we're upgrading um, uh, from uh, Windows 10 to Windows 11. That was like a, uh, the project we're working on. And through this project, I was, you know, uh, I was a project manager, but also like the Scrum Master. So I helped, you know, support the team, like the developers uh, from the team, from the daily Scrum, ensuring that, you know, these meetings have been held and, you know, uh, there's productivity, uh, as well as um, uh, on the project side, I was supporting the product owner. Uh, so definitely understanding what the, the the product is about, you know, relating with the, uh, the stakeholders and for the Scrum side as well, I had to, you know, manage conflicts because this is what happens in Scrum. We definitely meet with people and there's a possibility of conflict, right? So, you know, understanding and helping to, you know, manage or resolve this conflict was one of my uh, major things. And I would also say uh, other projects I've worked on is soft software upgrade, which is uh, from online banking to digital, uh, candidate digital banking, which I actually, you know, also really experienced a lot of things there as well. Uh, one of the most inter interesting things in uh, uh, my experience is uh, uh, like a retrospective, for example, whereby, you know, you have to chip in maybe like games for the first five to ten minutes because when it comes to scrum uh, you work with developers a lot and sometimes they can you know, you know be kind of they, they, they do not talk as much but to get the best out of every team you must ensure that they are free you know they're able to communicate from time to time and that, that way they kind of trust you as well so i think that's uh, i mean that also kind of boils to you know servant leadership pretty much okay so you've mentioned conflict. So tell me how you help manage conflict or help resolve conflict, your role as a Scrum Master and a project manager. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, that's a good question as well. Uh, for conflict resolution, I would say uh, in any environment, uh, could it be IT or, you know, 
actual projects, uh, it's very common, right? Uh, common in the sense that uh, a good example of one of the ones I've worked and I've done is, uh, you know, I had like a team with like kind of depending on each other, uh, more like dependencies, right? And uh, one of the, like the uh, team members of the other team, I uh, wasn't, uh, performing you know well enough and that kind of you know caused a bit of you know issues rising so during sometimes where we have meetings they keep on you know raising voice saying like oh the other person is the reason why we're not performing right so i had to you know do like one-on-ones uh with each you know team members to discuss to them with them that uh conflict is you know unavoidable unavoidable sometimes but you know being able to address it you know in a better format will help. So part of the things I did was uh, I spoke with the person, you know, they've been talking about and I explained to them, oh, uh, the way we work in Scrum, everyone works wants to work together, right? So ensuring that, you know, your productivity is, you know, always top notch will help. And as much as possible, uh, when they, I told them to, you know, to try to attend like the daily scrum, because that was part of the issues we we're having. They were not attending as much as possible. So more like, you know, coach them about the scrum values, right? So over time, I saw like a bit of improvement and, you know, I was able to resolve that. Right. Thank you, Samuel. Yeah. So tell me what you do not like about your job. Hmm. Uh, that's interesting. So, uh, do not like that's a tricky question <laughs> yeah well i mean uh any job especially like in project management or scrum that has to do with you no know, dealing with people at times especially developers they don't talk uh, as much right so and being able to break the ice is i mean i wouldn't say i don't like it but it's just what i have to do to get the job done right so uh breaking the ice and you know also uh always trying to like ease the air, right? There are times, you know, we're talking during like the daily scrum or maybe like doing the uh, review, definitely where we have stakeholders and some people just are mute. They don't want to see anything. They're not interested. So uh, I had to, you know, introduce games, as I mentioned earlier, uh, five minutes or icebreakers, like different things. Just tell me about, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be telling me, it could be like a uh, Kahoot games, you know, something just to break the ice. Then I noticed that for the first two, few meetings that I did it, it didn't really work much but after like the from the third one things you know got better and yeah it really helped so I think being able to be the neutral person and the jovial person is part of what is tough but eventually it just you know helps the work to be better and help people to you know communicate more which is very important in school yeah definitely so I know like you a project manager slash scrum master looking at your resume right now I can see that so tell me, how does that work? How can you be a Scrum Master that's doing Agile and also a project manager, I know that's heavily focused in Waterfall. What is your typical day like playing both roles? Right. Wow, that's a, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think I hear that a lot actually and um, I can explain. So the, I think the first thing people need to understand is, um, Project management is very wide, right? And we have Agile, we have Waterfall, for, as you said. Uh, so my day-to-day, -day, uh, I have lots of meetings. I would definitely say that. Uh, but I think because uh, my team in Scrum uh, self-managed and is a very mature team. So aside from the daily Scrum, or like, like the daily stand-up, which we call it, and um, maybe retro from time to time, on the Scrum side, it's not so busy, but on the project side, it's it could be very cumbersome because we have stakeholder meetings, you know, vendors having to discuss, you know, things or maybe, you know, schedules or duration, right? Uh, I would say that the best thing that has helped me over these years is being able to understand, like, you know, the Scrum values, right? And because some people don't want to switch from waterfall, right? They just want to be there, right? Uh, so I would say being able to understand how they marry each other, right? And how they kind of work hand in hand. And to be honest, this might not, you know, I mean, this might sound funny, but I would say emotional intelligence is actually very good too which is, you know, understanding what people are saying. So when people say things in meetings, don't just, you know, take it to yourself, right? Try to understand their point of view, you know, before addressing that, right? And I would say 
my day to day to address your question directly will be um uh I would say maybe beginning of a project, for example, I do a bit one-on-ones to get to know my stakeholders properly and also understand you know the roadmap from beginning to the end. Uh that will give me like a good knowledge. Then also, you know, my developers, for example, you know, getting to know them, their experience and you know, knowing how efficient they are. And um, yeah, I do that day to day. And other things, project side will be uh, managing my uh, schedules. Like I use Microsoft Project to manage my schedules. Um, I also use like uh, my, um, uh, apart from Microsoft Project, I use Jira as well. Uh, so I have to update the Jira board, you know, if there's any maybe ticket spending or anyone assigned, you know. And what I do actually, by the end of the month, apart from maybe like the retro is maybe sum up like a check my, my sprint report to see, okay, how far have we done? Uh, we don't want to point fingers, but at the same time in the project side, we kind of want to know, you know, if there's a bottleneck, right? If there's anyone delaying on any tickets or any issues or any feedback from the stakeholder, if it's coming too frequent. So that way it's more like, you know, lesson blend or, you know, action items just to make sure like everything is going, you know, perfectly. Okay, so sometimes I see uh, a lot of time, even in my job right now, that we are hiring for this Scrum Master position. Mm -hmm. So we always get a lot of questions about people asking, oh, what's the difference between a Scrum Master and a project manager? And people till date are still very confused in our company. So in your opinion, if you have to pick two different things that are different between a Scrum Master and a project manager, what would that be? Oh, wow, I have to think about this one. <laughs> um, the major difference. So I think the easiest way is uh, Scrum is more of servant leadership, right? So unlike managing people in project management, you kind of support the team. So more like you carry the team along. Yeah, like you're not manning them, say, oh, you have to do this, do this, do this, right? Rather we're like, oh, we have to do this. How can this process be better how can this you no know, documentation like hey, whatever you're doing just to make it better and also in scrum because it's product oriented or like you know yeah product oriented you also have to look at the end goal right the end goal or the product goal which sometimes is you know kind of wider than the project goal right so that's uh a way on the project side uh, it's slightly different because sometimes the projects are timeline might be shorter than the product, right? So that way you are thinking of costs, which are the three uh, triple constraints of project management, of cost, the scope, and uh, um, this cost, scope, and uh, time, actually, right? So those things are like the driving forces in project management because you don't want to, you know, be over budget or in, under budget and you don't want to go, you know, out of scope. And also like you want to make sure that, okay, if it's six months, it's six months, maybe plus or minus one month. So the lot of, you know, anal analysis in project management, but um, in Scrum is more value-based, you know, improving the value, you know, continuous improvement, you know, lean thinking and things like that. Yeah, that was a very good answer, Samuel. So tell me what you don't like about retro. Retro? Well, uh, so funny, based on my experience, actually, I would say I like retro. Why? Because it has actually helped me to do my job better. Why? Because, I mean, uh, at first, before I joined the company, they do retro, but they don't maybe, they make it short, right? Like, 10, 15 minutes, right? I mean, I would say 30 minutes is ideal. It's not too bad, right? We're going to discuss what went well and maybe what didn't go well, what can be improved, right? But at the same time, we are all humans, right? We know we are at the workplace, but it's good to just, you know, break the ice to an extent. So I would say what I don't like is uh, sometimes it could be sort of boring, especially when uh, you are introducing for example, maybe games to them, and they're like, ah, uh, we have to walk, right? Like, what's going on here, right? But at the same time, it also 
interesting because these people that seems to be like they don't want to talk by the time they are you know excited they like start laughing they turn on their camera and that's what you want right because when people are free with each other they are more transparent which is very important in scrum right you want that transparency you want the trust right from people so i would say that it's both good and also you know sometimes dicey so i would say uh that's the part of it is uh being the one to break the ice all the time i'll maybe I have to be the first person to talk because you don't want to point fingers right then after maybe i talk for a while like okay uh who wants to go next which is very good right you don't want to say oh you have to go next right who wants to go next and you know that way it goes on and on and and i can remember actually because it was a control position before i left uh they were like uh i mean they they noticed that you know lots of things that have done like it has helped to bond the team very well which is you know that's a good very uh, good comment to uh like a feedback from people like oh that you know the the meetings are more in like engaging and also people also you know talk about the action items or you know retro points right and i think that's also part of what you want to build in your scrum team that's you know confidence and that's you know transparency i think yeah those are the things I actually, you know, was able to point out. Thank you very much, Samuel. So what questions do you have for me? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, based on what I saw in your profile, I know you're an agile coach and uh, you've been, you know, in the industry for, I would say, maybe longer than I have been. Uh, what are like the challenges you've maybe had um, over the years and, you know, for someone who maybe like wants to grow in their career like me, what would you advise? So like more like two questions in one, if you don't mind. No, that, that's a very good question. So for someone that's a Scrum Master slash a project manager that have been working in the tech space and you're looking for a career growth and opportunity, the first thing I've always told a lot of students and mentees is always to start where you are, right? You don't go outside to start looking for all those opportunities or you go outside, start researching, oh, how can I be better for some other companies when you can start at your current company by mm -hmm. asking your, your, state, your manager's leadership, oh, what can I do to grow in the current position or what are the career growth outlook for my current position or, right. or how long do I have to stay in this current position for me to actually grow, right? That's one part. Other part too is to get a mentor. I won't lie. Getting a mentor have helped cut back for me a lot of shortcuts, right? Because that mentor will help guide you to know, oh, what certifications to focus on. Because right. you and I know that there's a lot of certifications out yeah. there. There's a lot of different accreditation bodies that are out there. But that mentor will help guide you, you know, and tell you like, oh, this certification will be better based on the goals and plans and career outlook you have, you have for yourself. Right. And also by you following these steps, Mm -hmm. This might be your potential end goal, right? So all that is very important. And at the same time, don't, don't stop learning, you know. You have to constantly and continuously learn, right? And also seek out and ask questions. By you doing all of those things, 100% it can help you lead to your growth, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I think the last question I, I asked, I don't know if you got that, was maybe if you've had like maybe any challenges in the field and maybe, yeah, just... Oh, yes, I have a lot of challenges, you know, and a lot of people that will say that, oh, you you can do it. And sometimes, uh, you know, like for me, English is like my fifth language, right? Uh, and it's the, I'm being honest. Sometimes people will be like, oh, uh, being an agile coach or that position is, involves a lot of training, it involves a lot of teaching, so your accent might be a, a, a hinder or your accent may be that. Or right. people might try to discourage you throughout the journey. And even sometimes people that you even work with might even see you as, oh, you cannot do that. So, and sometimes if you don't look for that opportunity, it won't come to you, right? And sometimes people that are supposed to help you might not want to help, right? So those are the different challenges, but... And always you have to believe in yourself and you yeah. have to know that there's no one that's perfect, right? And at the same time, any challenges you have is just setting you up for a better next experience in the future. So, of course, challenges, it's, it's normal and it's part of the whole process in the whole learning process and growth in this. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, thank you so much for 
the answer as well. All right. Thank you. Ding, ding, ding. Our <laughs> interview is done. So now we are out of the interview phase. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my subscribers, what do you all think? Would you all hire Samuel? Would you hire Samuel? Tell me in the comment <laughs> down below. If, Samuel, hire me. <laughs> if you will hire Samuel, right? So I want you guys to comment down below if you will hire Samuel. And by the way, I'm going to be posting Samuel's LinkedIn on this description so you all can follow Samuel on LinkedIn. You know, Samuel, I've been part of Aisha Tech for almost a year now, Samuel. Sure. Yeah. More than a year, actually. Yeah, more than a year. I didn't know time flies. So, so she's one of our mentees. Grew so expansionally well. So, oh, so proud you. of him. You know. So, thank you all for watching this series. Follow and subscribe to Aisha Tech so that you won't miss any of this series. This is a New Year series, real life interview. So, thank you all for doing that. Thank you all for watching. See you all again in our next interview series. <laughs>